my name is Donia Shayeluj, and I'm a Go Backend developer. Um, I'm working at Powder. We are building PC and mobile app for gamers to create content. And uh, you can find me on social media as Donia CLD. It's easier just, you know, to compress my last name. And uh, I will be talking about today how I use Go and the compiler TinyGo to monitor my hand halves. I will wrap, I will cover today what is my ideal hand house, and I will do a brief introduction about what is TinyGo. Maybe you attended the TinyGo hack session with Ron Evans on Thursday, so bear with me during this introduction. And I will talk about what is my project with this hand house. I will do a little demo so you have a glimpse of what it looks like using TinyGo. And I will wrap up with the things that I learned and what are the next steps of this project. So first, let me introduce you my hands. So at the front, you can see Bleuette, and at the back, you can see Francine and their hand halves. I wanted to upgrade this hand halves to actually monitor it, and it was an easy step uh, to monitor the temperature and the humidity first. And of course, I wanted to visualize these metrics in a nice way, and dashboards are, are a pretty nice way to do it. Okay, so let's dive into TinyGo and what is it? So TinyGo is a compiler for the Go programming language, but for smaller kinds of systems. And you might wonder what are small systems? So I like to define it like places where the memory size is limited. For example, microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are like small computers, I would say. And if you had the chance to have a badge, a Go badge, it's a microcontroller. And TinyGo support around 86, maybe a bit more now, uh, boards. And um, you can also use TinyGo for browser, like building WebAssembly. And you can also say, I want to have a tiny command line interface with a memory, a binary that is uh, not so huge, you know? But let's see in action what it, oh, sorry. So let's do a bit of history about what is TinyGo. I like actually to know what a project comes from, you know? Um, so at the beginning, Ake, which is the inventor, inventor of TinyGo, explored existing projects because he wanted to make some LEDs blinking very fast. But he explored like Python, MicroPython stuff, but it was not satisfying for him. So he just decided to write a new compiler. Of course, <laughs> what else? And the first January of 2019, the first version of TinyGo was released. And a few days later, Ron Evans actually presented it at FOSDEM, which is an open source conference in Europe. At the end of this year, many stars, but like star doesn't mean something really in GitHub, but many contributors and commits actually appeared and it was the beginning of a rising project. Now there are many users and adopters of TinyGo that are using it for side projects like I'm doing today. And um, there, there is, this is also used by the industry, especially for the WebAssembly part. Maybe you saw the talk yesterday about Wazero and it's, all, it's used by Aqua Security with Trivi, for example. Okay, so what is the difference between the Go compiler and the TinyGo compiler? I will not go into details about compilation theory. Just to have a glimpse, so a compiler can be seen as its layers and it's transforming a Go source code into an executable binary that can be actually understood by a machine. So the first box is the Go compiler, we'll say, and the second box is the specific part of the tiny Go compiler. So it's using a LLVM projects and libraries, and it can run actually optimizations on one of the layer of the code. So at the end, the executable binary is actually smaller in size than a one built with Go. So let's see in action this time what it looks like. Here I have an example of the hello world, the very basic one printing the hello world sentence program, and I build it with Go. And you can see at the bottom, the size is 1.8 megabytes. If I build it with TinyGo, it's 29 kilobytes. So you can see that there is a huge difference here. 
between the two sizes. And we'll see later in the talk why it is important actually. If you again went to the hack session, you know this comment, but tiny go flash comment is the main one to actually write a program on a board a microcontroller. So it compiles the program on your computer, it writes it on the chip memory, and then it runs it. You have to specify your target, uh, so the code is actually understanding which board you're talking to, and your program, or like go, the directory where the program are. Uh, here I'm using an Arduino Nano 33, that is the name of my target, and the program is called just hello.go. And just you know, it's a little tip if you're going to dive into TinyGo. When you run and flash your board, there is the built-in LED that is blinking. It depends on your board, but it's, it is the case on my Arduino. Yeah, we, I mean, when we are writing code, we are debugging. <laughs> it's part of the job. And um, there is different ways of debugging hardware. Um, there is a TinyGo debugger but it's not supporting all the boards. So if your board is not supporting it, actually you have to have another component that is the debugger. But I didn't have that on my board. So I did the basic one, which is printing some logs. And I'm gonna show you, because it seems simple, but it's not, how to retrieve actually the logs from the hardware. So. Here is a diagram, it's very simple. I have my Arduino, I plugged it through USB to my computer, and it's mounting a serial port. It's streaming all the logs to the serial port, and I wanted after to actually read them on my console. So I just wrote a little program in Go that is connecting to the serial port, opening it, and just streaming this output from the Arduino to my console, and you can see some logs here. If you're using Linux, you can find the name of your serial port is slash, slash dev slash tty. And if you have a Mac, you probably have slash dev slash cu dot xxx. Okay. So I wanted to like to explain just a thing here. So I have my program. Hi, Chicago. What's up, golfers today? And uh, I'm running it with Go. So very basic, I have my two lines of logs, and you can see I run it in August. And I have on the, at the bottom uh, my program that is flashed on my Arduino, and I'm reading from the serial port. And you can see something here about the time on the tiny go side, I guess. So it's beginning in 1970, uh, the zero Unix time. It's because there is no sync time on my Arduino. So just, you know, don't count on time if you have these logs. Okay. And also, each time you're resetting your board or writing a new program, it's gonna reset the clock. So now you know everything about TinyGo. You're kind of experts. No, not really. But you have the basics. I mean, you can answer now about like some stuff about TinyGo. Okay, so here we are gonna deep dive in the project. First, we have on one side the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. So IoT here is important because there is a Wi-Fi antenna and I'm using it in my project. And the second component is the DHC22, which is a um, sensor for humidity and temperature, and it's a very basic one on the market. And we have only three wires. So first one is the data, because I'm sending instruction to the DHT and I'm receiving some measures back. I have in red the power supply and in black the ground. And you can see like in real what it looks like on the picture. Okay. What it looks like like in the big picture is I have on one side my hen house. There is the Arduino with a program running on it, written in Go, built with tiny Go and it's sending measures with um, temperature and humidity, as I said, through HTTP. So on the other side, I have in my house, my laptop with my Kubernetes cluster running on it and a web server written in Go and a monitoring layer so I can actually scrape metrics and build my dashboards. 
the two parts are communicating through Wi-Fi. But um, it was working perfectly at home when I built it. But when I moved, actually, the Arduino and all the system in the hen house at the end of the backyard, I mean, it was not receiving any signal anymore. So I had to add a router access point that is actually here today. And um, I, has, I have this long cable between the router and my house at the router access point all along the garden currently. So, you know. Okay. This is what my production environment looks like. So on the first picture, uh, you can see the router. The, uh, it's just under the hen house. And you can see the power supply also on the Arduino. And on the second picture, you can see Francine. Maybe you recognize her. And the Arduino that is protected and the DHT. So you can actually take the measure. We saw like the hardware part. Now I'm going to explain to you the code. So I'm not going to show the full code here, um, but uh, so there is on my GitHub repository all the code if you're curious about it. First, I needed some imports. So Tiny Go duplicated la standard libraries from Go and cherry picked only the necessary part. So FMT and Time are pretty the same. But Machine is a specific Tiny Go package that lets you know, go how to talk to the board and give instructions. And then we have the Tiny Go drivers library that map the hardware comments. So instead of writing bytes uh, comments to the hardware, you're going to use interface, for example, for the DHT drivers. I'm just saying DHT.read measure, for example, and not sending 0x0x1, zero zero for example. I'm using also net uh, to send request, HTTP request, and Wi-Fi Nina to actually connect to the Wi-Fi antenna to the router. So here is the main function. This is pseudocode. I modified it a bit, but in the idea, it looks like it. First, I'm setting up my device. So saying uh, I'm using the pin D6, which is an input output. I'm connecting to the access point to the router. And then every 10 seconds, I'm asking the DHT to um, send a measure. Uh, and I'm receiving back temperature, humidity, and an error. In case of failure, failure, I'm printing it. And otherwise, I'm sending these values through HTTP to my web server on my laptop. I'm not going to go into details about web server. I guess we probably all know how to do it. Maybe you saw the lightning talk from yesterday, deploying a web server in seven minutes. But um, yeah, so. There is only one thing that I wanted to mention that is important about the web server is the Prometheus side. So Prometheus lets you define some different kind of metrics, for example, histogram. But here I'm using Gauge to set up my values. So I have a Gauge for the temperature, another one for the humidity, for reg registering them, and then I can scrape them. This is the full software infrastructure. Uh, so I have my Arduino that is running, again, the Tiny Go program. It's sending these measures to my cluster, to my web server. And I just wanted to expose my web server outside of my cluster so they can communicate. That's why I have an Nginx ingress. And at the top, you can see the monitoring layer. So I have a service monitor to actually instrument the web server and scrape the app metrics. And I'm sending these sensor values to Prometheus then to Grafana, and at the end, I have my dashboards that I can build and see. It's demo time, and I'm counting on demo god. So let's pray all together. So first, I'm going to flash my Arduino. So using the tiny go flash command, I have the Arduino Nano 33 board that is uh, precise here. And I have my program, which is in tinygo handmain.go. So let's hope it's going to work. OK, everything is set up. I'm going to show you here. So I have the Arduino here. I have the DHT. And you can see, maybe you can see the LED here blinking. OK. 
it's successful. First step, okay. So uh, I want to highlight something here. Thank you. <laughs> this is only the first step, so. <laughs> So um, I want to highlight one thing here, is the total size uh, memory of the Arduino, it's 256 kilobytes. So maybe you remember that um, at the beginning when I was mentioning the hello world, uh, the size of the binary is 1.8 megabytes. So here is the importance, I could not even write this program on my board. So you can see how TinyGo can be powerful here for hardware, even the hello world doesn't fit in my Arduino, you know. And I have some lines of code, you know, to send this request. Okay, so now we have this, I want to show you another thing. So uh, I have some logs in the code still, and uh, I'm gonna read from the serial port these logs. So I'm running this program that I told you, and I'm precising my port. It's not the right one because I just plug in here, but that's fine. It is actually correcting. It's fixing it for me. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so we are happy again. It's working. We missed the first actually logs, but we have the seventh request here. It's been running for one minute. And uh, this line of logs represent the, the moment the DHT answered the values of temperature and humidity. And it's in Celsius, maybe you're using most of you Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm from Europe. <laughs> and um, then I'm uh, sending this request to the web server, so here we can see it was sent properly. Okay, I'm gonna kill that, now it's working. The next step here is to see on the cluster if it's running properly. And actually my computer right now is connected to the router Wi-Fi, that is just here, so they're all connected on the same uh, network. And I'm just gonna check, so my cluster is deployed. Uh, it was not really interesting for the demo to deploy a cluster, you know, but uh, there is the script to deploy all the, the whole cluster if you're curious about it again. And uh, can we see, maybe it's gonna be better like that. So here we can see, it's, it's French time also, <laughs> so. Um, we can see that the gauche has been set to the right values and we are happy, it's working. So now the last step is to check the dashboards. So you, here you can see live the values that were sent to the web server here on Grafana and it's not so hot on the stage actually right now. Okay, so we have them on, so on the left side, we have the humid humidity part, on the right, the temperature one, and um, I have the minimum value in the last five minutes range set up here. I have the aver average one, the max one, the last value, and the, these graphs, um, I have some thresholds, just, you know, to check if it's too hot or too cold for the hands, because it's for the hands, if you forgot. And, uh, then I have uh, these tables, but it was more like to debug when I was building it. I found it easier to check just the last values in the tables, so I left it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is to make the temperature increase by blowing on the DHT. So I'm gonna show you here. So I have my DHT, I'm gonna blow. I hope we're gonna see a nice flow. Okay, so we have a bit of latency between the moment I'm actually blowing, the moment that the value is asked to the DHT because it's each 10 seconds, the moment it's sent to the cluster, and finally when Prometheus is scraping it, and I have uh, 30 seconds actually values. Oh, yay. Thank you. So you can see here that we went to 92.8%, uh, which is the maximum value. And on the temperature, we went to 29. So it's, it's, you can, so the humidity sensor is actually more sensitive than the uh, temperature one. So the humidity is gonna increase a lot. You're gonna see here a huge difference, uh, which is kind of more impressive for the demo. 
And on the temperature side, it's going to be like a few degrees. Okay. So I guess we are happy with the demo right now. And uh, I'm going to wrap up uh, the presentation now. So um, you learn really the basics about TinyGo. So TinyGo is, is a Go compiler for small places. And you know what are small places now. You can use the main command flash to actually write on the board, but you can also use the build command or the run command. Like TinyGo is focused on keeping um, consistency with the Go commands also. And um, TinyGo drivers examples. Um, so there are the drivers library that I mentioned, the DHT, Wi-Fi, Nina. There are many examples in there and you can actually use them very easily. I use them when I began uh, before modifying any code and like playing with it. And there are treasure chests, but there were all, also some bugs. Uh, and it was really interesting when I began with the DHC, it was not working, uh, the sensor. So uh, it was my first step actually uh, contributing to TinyGo, you know? So I invite you to um, contribute to TinyGo if you're curious about it. Uh, and join the Slack channel uh, on the Gopher Slack. There is a channel, TinyGo. Um, also, it's a Hacktoberfest, so it's a, a good period to contribute to open source, I guess. And um, I don't have any strong recommendation about hardware, but I know that this board that I mentioned are really well supported by TinyGo. And if you don't want to invest, or if you don't have hardware, that's fine. There is a TinyGo playground, actually, like the Go playground, but like with simulated boards. And like you can put cables on LEDs and play it with the code. Um, and as golfers, you have now all the skills to enter the IoT world. Um, you have probably an ID. You can use a plugin for VS Code or the Goland. And if you're on Emacs or Veeam, I'm sorry for you. Okay, so um, as you saw, this project is pretty experimental at the moment, and I really want to um, upgrade it next year. That's my next step. So uh, first, um, I'm not, I don't have to really use HTTP. It was because I knew it and it was easy to begin with, but I would like to move to async protocol to MQTT. Also, I told you I have this long cable along the garden right now, which is not very handy. So moving to long range Wi-Fi board could be a good option. And also someone mentioned me before yesterday that I could use a radio range. That, so I'm thinking about it. And because I brought all my stuff here to show you all of this, I would like to deploy my app in the cloud so I can actually see my dashboards from anywhere. Like currently my hands are alone at home and I would love to see if they're good or not, you know? And uh, long story, but short story, uh, I would like to add a fox detection system. And um, also the same person mentioned me that I could add actually a magnet on the board to verify, uh, on the board, sorry, on the, on the door of the hen house if it's working properly and see if it's closed or not. Because the fox came and um, because the system of opening and closing door was broken at the moment. So we forgot to close the door. So I would like to have on my, like on my dashboard if it's open or closed from the bed. Okay. Um, thank you a lot um, to the community, to the TinyGo community, and uh, to the people that helped me, friends and partners here. It's not uh, like a lonely project. Uh, you can find all my code again. And I, if you have any question about TinyGo, I would love to answer. There is also run events. Uh, here that can answer your questions. And again, I would love to connect with you and talk about Go. Thank you a lot.